Well, this old thing's are more. This is the cooler where you put dead bodies. <sighs> this is crazy. This is like the holy grail of ghost hunting. For the next 48 hours, we're staying in the most haunted hotel in America. I don't know if I'm able to do this. Which Me neither. This wasn't only just a hotel here in the Ozarks. This was also a hospital. Oh! Oh! There it goes! There it goes! That looks creepy, doesn't it? The lady behind us literally just said, go have fun with the ghost. Yes. I wonder did she see something already? Yes. Or <laughs> this is maybe crazy. she's a ghost. <laughs> oh. This hotel already has a spooky vibe. It gives me chill bumps a little bit. That's Moore's. Moore's was what? Who was the general manager? At the hotel recently discovered something pretty creepy. They have dug up bottles filled with human body parts. Oh man. You know what, there's so many things that have happened here in this dining room. The ballroom at the Crescent hosted many events where 400 plus guests and other famous dignitaries attended a dedication ceremony. In the late 1800s, people used to dance here. Take the last minute. Right. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Enjoy. All right. Yeah. Got our mysterious keys. Whatever. This place looks eerie. Look at the walls. The walls are still like purple. Like the owner basically loved purple. Look up. Wow. And if you look down too, it's the same thing. It's like it may never end. So it's these big old hallways. It's like everything is set up like a scary movie scene. Come play with us, Danny. While walking down the hallway, we bumped into one of our ghost tour guides, and she had something to tell us about our room, 419. I guess you're looking for ghosts, right? Yes, ma'am, we are. <laughs> well, I've suspected for a very long time there's more ghosts in this room than Theodora. But she's been seen outside that door right there. Many guests have had encounters in there, and they're all unique, but... This is our room. I had a psychic here recently, and she said there were more spirits in there than she's ever seen in one spot. So be careful. Oh, okay. Have fun. Thank you. I'm so nervous. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep at night. I, don't, I, 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 I can't even speak right. This is a whole door. I wonder if we will knock back. Nothing happened. This room is kind of spooky though. Yes. There goes Theodore. This is where we're gonna sleep. Theodore is right there. This is, ah! I don't know. I've heard so many crazy things about this place that people have basically been sleeping at night or when they wake up in their room in the morning time. Basically their clothes will be folded, things will be moved around. So we're in one of the most haunted rooms here in the Crescent Hotel. See, this hotel was built in 1886. But Austin, here's the thing. This wasn't only just a hotel here in the Ozarks. This was also a hospital. It was a hospital started by Norman Baker. Who was he really? Norman Baker started off in theater. He was a vaudeville magician, talking to crowds. You know, he was a charming guy. He knew yeah. what to do. But he was very brilliant in how he started a hospital, which he called an institute. He was so good at getting people riled up. He was so charismatic. He had a radio station that broadcast to millions of people. He got into a little trouble, right? 
He got into major trouble with the American Medical Association. Trouble to the point where they both were in suits against each other. This guy basically doesn't have a medical license and he's telling all these people that he has a cure for cancer. He has the radio station, he also has a magazine called TNT, but also how he was able to get the word out was he had these live demonstrations. Mm -hmm. and, and these live demonstrations brought in hundreds of thousands of people who actually performed uh, open surgery in front of crowds of people. There was people who were really sick back then who thought that Norman was this guy who was fighting against the American Medical Association. He was for the small guy. So people were just like flocking to this hotel, what hospital at the time, the Baker Institute, to get cured for their ailments. And this was post Great Depression, and so a lot of folks needed something simple. I think they gravitated to what Norman was doing was because he had this solution, this elixir, that was a cheaper option than going to surgeries. Listen, another crazy thing is that some of the organs of the people are still in the hotel to this day. Yeah. In jars. And it's recent up until 2019. It all started when hotel groundskeepers found the first bottle about three months ago. I really didn't have any idea what was going on until I picked up the first bottle that had a clear fluid in it with something in it. They discovered 500 bottles altogether that point to the stories of Norman Baker using the hotel back in the late 1930s to treat cancer patients. Here's a burial site. This is where the bottles were found. Guess what? Guess what I see? I see the manager. You're like the laziest manager ever. As nighttime approached, we decided to head back to our room and finally settle in. We were trying to stay together, but Austin drifted off somewhere. It's so quiet and spooky up here. What? You almost scared me. I thought you was a black ghost. What is it? Oh, it's just a closet. <laughs> ah! When you go to sleep at night, who's gonna be watching over you? Oh, oh my gosh! Oh, I fell asleep a little early and uh, I just woke up because I felt like somebody dropped a dime or a nickel. Something else just fell. I don't know. This is very comfortable bed though, but it is still a spooky room. I found the cat headstone, the famous manager of the hotel. Morris. Oh my goodness. 1973, 1994, a cat was the manager. And if you've seen Pet Cemetery, you know how freaky this would be. <laughs> I wonder is that a church right there? That cool building. Yeah, that, like that, makes, that makes it even more creepy. <laughs> <laughs> is that blood? It does look like some blood dripping from up there. Wow. This drop right here is crazy. There was a gentleman by the name of Michael who actually was building this and he fell ah! off of here. I'm so ready for the ghost tour tonight thing, but you know what I'm really waiting for? The morgue. My name is Mr. Graves. One of your ghost tour guide tonight. This was the invention that made Norman Baker a millionaire. He invented this thing for his, uh, at his family machine shop in 1912. He got a patent on it. He went on to make a million and a half dollars selling this machine. My friends, let's go on a tour for a change. It's moving up. I'm right in the middle of the zone here. Come on, Dr. Ellis or whoever you are. Oh, there we go. That, this is where Do Norman Baker had his offices and stuff over here with some strange energy in this part of the hotel. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go to the morgue, shall we? And you know why we love the morgue, don't you? I know, don't, I don't know why you like people are dying to get in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good one. This looks so creepy, y'all. Well, it was more of a house of pain in reality. I mean, the, the people that came here, they, they were desperate. They'd hear him on the radio at night talk about his fear of cancer. You know, they'd think, what have I got to lose, you know? He made between one and two million dollars in the two years he ran this place. I'm sorry, some of y'all come in the autopsy room, some of y'all can go in the uh, uh, pharmacy. Uh, yeah. Wow. Wow, y'all, this is like some of the real jars that are from the Baker's Hospital. This whole thing's the morgue. This, this is the cooler where you put dead bodies. Oh, wow. The dead bodies are stored in here. 
So many people have died right here. The drain inside the morgue that Norman used is still here today. Our tour guide uses ghost machine above the autopsy drain. Norman Baker's torture operation finally caught up with him, but in the most interesting way. Remember his tension against the American Medical Association? To stop administering his elixirs to patients. He essentially just stabbed patients multiple times with this concoction of just watermelon seeds, brown corn silk, alcohol, carbonic acid, just basically juice. Basically torture is what he was doing. And you won't even believe how they got him. Mail, Mail fraud. fraud. Norman Baker was released from jail after a couple of years and then he moved to Florida. What did he die from? Cancer. We survived 48 hours in one of the craziest, the most beautiful, scary hotel here in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Until next time, y'all. Oh, wow, there's a butterfly that's <laughs> Wait, just landed. That's amazing. <laughs> they don't want us to leave, but we gotta go. Peace.